I am going to do something different tonight. I'm going to do something I haven't done for a while, and I always enjoy it when I do. I'm going to read one of my short stories. And this one's kind of corny. <laughs> You'll see what I mean. It's called Thistles in the Corn. It's a folksy tale. Move faster, the father Elijah called. We must dig these thistles out of the corn. The midday sun was beating down and Micah's water flask was running out. He'd sweat the liquid from his body. He felt dizzy and began to reel. One last gulp couldn't relieve his thirst. Dad, please. I'm tired and thirsty. I need a break. The father looked up as his spade half dug another thistle from a row. Sorry, son. I think we'll break until the sun drops over those trees. You don't look good. He took a clean handkerchief out of his pocket, reached up and dabbed his son's wet forehead. Oh, you are hot and flushed. We'd better hurry out of the sun. I guess I'm starting to feel it too. Micah noticed his father's breathing was heavier and his face flushed with heat. Yet, not a drop of sweat touched the old man's brow. Micah looked at his father with a deep concern. Thanks, Dad. I'm not a baby. I think we both better get out of it, and you need water and some salt. You ain't looking so great either. They took some shade under the old rickety Ford pickup at the edge of the field. Micah grabbed some water and salting crackers, handing them to his father. The old man accepted them gratefully. Then the young man picked up another jug of water and downed several, several gulps of it before grabbing a sandwich. It was a one-acre patch of sweet corn, but it was a money crop at the farmer's market. The father spoke, looking at Micah. Son, I'm getting old and will die soon. I want you to listen. Taking a deep, rasping breath, he continued, You must live a very good and honorable life. It will earn you respect in this world. Is there something wrong with you? No, I don't think so. I thought it was time to have this talk with you, is all. Micah rolled his eyes, Dad. It is so hard to live a good and honorable life these days. I know you are an honorable man, but have you been out in the world, even here in Podunk County, nowhere? There are drugs, stealing, and all kinds of stuff we're told not to do. How do I live an honorable life when the world won't respect me, Father? Well, the thistles are like the things that seem small. They can grow and take over. You must keep tending to your life every day as you do the thistles in this field. Even if not one person out of the world respects you, you get to respect yourself. The old man rasped as he inhaled. Son, you are wrong. I do see that stuff, even here. But ask yourself who you can respect. You'll get your answer. The old man laughed. Now get some rest and we will refill our water flasks and get back to those thistles. Micah woke up as he felt coolness brush over his skin and knew the sun was moving on. The light would be fading soon. Dad, I think we should get back to those thistles now. 
No answer. Micah looked over at his aged father and knew he had died. No color touched his cheek. The eyes slightly open and lifeless. Covering his father's body with his own, Micah cried, holding his father's lifeless form close. Dad, Dad, you lied to me, old man. You said you weren't dying yet. Dang you. Finally, the son picked up his father and laid him gently in the trunk. He called his mother from the hospital. Ruth Ellen. Ruth Ellen stood and looked at her husband's still form in the hospital morgue. Micah sat on a stool in the corner crying. Mom, he talked about dying at lunch. He dozed off and never woke up. I'm so sorry. She hugged her son. Mother and son wept silently. Then, in time, they had to leave Elijah behind. Ruth Ellen told the desk clerk to call Hope Valley Funeral Home. The day of the funeral, the entire church where they held the service filled past the doors with friends and admirers of Micah's father. The minister spoke the words of a friend and pastor of the honorable man whom Elijah had been. Our brother has gone before us, the minister said. We'll catch up with him in our time. Love be with you all. Micah heard the words, but barely registered the meaning. He wanted to run away and hide his confusion after the, his father's final words. After the service, the minister took Micah aside. Micah, you are in so much pain. I could see it in your face. Your mother told me what happened. She told me you keep apologizing. Micah, didn't the doctor tell you? It was a massive heart attack. It would have happened if he'd been resting at home. There is nothing to feel guilty about. Pastor, I'm not guilty about his dying anymore. Yes, I went through that stuff, but it's not my problem now. My father gave me instructions on how to live my life. I see all those people here who loved and respected him. How do I live up to that? You don't. You live your own life of honor, whatever that may be. And what of my mother? Honor her. That night, Micah's mother revealed his father's wishes. Elijah left this homestead to me until I die, and then it will be yours. But to you, son, he left the acre and all it needs and bears. Mom, what if I don't stay? What if I want to go into the city and make a life there? Well, I'd rather you didn't, but you are a man and have your own mind. That night, Micah tossed in bed, unable to sleep. His father's death, death still fresh. The dreams of a young man pressing him to something all his own. Micah's confusion drove his wakefulness through the night. The next morning, he went to breakfast as usual. I heard you last night, Micah. You have been through a lot. Have you come to any decision? No, Mom, only more confusion. I guess for now, I'll go to the field and finish the job. I'll pick the corn. Then, when it's ripe, I'll take it to market. Micah went to his acre looked up at the only cloud in the sky, shed a single tear, winked, and cleared thistles from the corn. Twenty years later, his mother long passed, Micah remained on the homestead. He'd married and had five children, two boys and three girls. His hair was graying on the temples. 
His wife's waist was thickening slightly. His children spoke of when they would grow up and leave home to make their lives. Children, I want you to hear what I'm telling you. You should do what your life leads you to do. I chose to stay and make this farm. And if one of you chooses the same, I will be grateful to you and to God. He took a deep cleansing breath. I want to tell you about your grandfather and what he told me the day he died. Be honorable and gain respect. It will serve you well. That is what my father told me, and it's true. I promise you it is true. Stay away from those who will try to put you in bad places like drugs, excessive alcohol, or loose sexuality. We sit around this table that was my mother's, and I've used many more words than my father did, but the words are true. Samuel. I end with this little tale, an honor for family or foe, if you wish. A bit of corny me I've put into the mix. Still, lesson be real, as I was taught as a child. And as I pray, I taught mine something of the same. Thank you. I wrote that story more years ago than I can even remember. It was one of the first I put in a book of short stories that I published in a chat book. The very first thing I ever published. The thing that caught me, my father passed away this year on February 27th. The funeral was held at the same church I grew up in. Now, I am much older than Micah in the story, <laughs> much, much older. But I was on the cradle roll in that church. We were raised in that church. The day of my dad's funeral, the sanctuary was standing room only. And I think some were out in the vestibule. I think where some were out past the doors and there were a lot of tears but there were also a lot of smiles they told some of dad I read one of dad's letters where he was kind of comical about mom learning to wear shoes <laughs> she grew up in Missouri <laughs> and dad liked to give her a hard time we've all mourned in our own way but this story struck me after dad passed. I had actually written this story and it couldn't be more true of the man that raised me. So anyway, I hope you enjoyed it and I'll probably start sculpting Frankie tomorrow. <laughs> Good night. I love you. Smile away.